Welcome to another episode of Modern Bok. Thanks for joining me. So, um, yeah, the last week was interesting. It's interesting to see how the teams have now strategies up. We've got two games of two different, two, a tale of two cities, in my opinion, coming up this week. But please, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, please share, please like and add comments. I'd love to hear your feedback on the different of the scenarios of the week before the game start. So yeah, tale two cities, as I was saying, we've got the one game where two teams are coming off of wins. Uh, New Zealand coming off with a stunning performance against Argentina. They really show how they can bounce back and keep the quality of the, why they are such a quality side. So very impressive. And South Africa also coming from a decent win against Australia, recovering their name a little bit after losing to them four weeks ago now. So yeah, very impressive and interesting. On the other side, you've got two teams who... I feel put good performances in, but uh, weren't playing their best. Last week was Argentina, I think, probably their worst game of the this, of, of this season. They really weren't, they, they were shell-shocked. I think they, they were expecting a, a New Zealand team who was a little bit down in the dumps, but the New Zealand team came firing and they just had no answers. I feel that was probably their biggest flaw. They just couldn't cope with the, the, the New Zealand firepower. Australia, on the other hand, also didn't have a stunning game, in my opinion. A lot of missed opportunities giveaway tries especially at the beginning wow um so yeah i think that both both of the team both those teams have something to prove and this essay new zealand it's pretty much who's top dog so yeah both uh new zealand will obviously take the chat title but and south africa will take second uh but it's still a stunning weekend and great uh good good i think it's going to be some quality rugby but all of the teams have something to prove so yeah let's get into it Villeru, um is getting his 50th uh, cap this week, so congratulations to him. I think I, I have to admit a lot of people didn't think it was possible after um, he hasn't been able to play for us for a while in the Alistair Kutsia era. He hardly played and has everybody expected him to to miss out actually and not get that 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 accolade. So well done to him. He's really shown the season why he is there. I do feel sometimes he's a little bit shaky. He either has an amazing game or a poor game, and it's the coach's job to just make sure that they can handle the player like that. Um, but he's still a great, definitely currently his best number 15, but I feel it's good that we blood some more players in, in case of those days where I feel he does have a little bit of a weak performance on his side. So yeah, uh, I think the biggest thing here with the whole, obviously the big talking point of this game is the last meeting South Africa took it. So it's all about, firstly, All Black Revenge trying to prove what they can do. And South Africa keeping their decent record at home against New Zealand. I mean, I know that if you consider all the things we don't have to admit, but considering compared to other countries, we have a pretty damn good record against New Zealand at home. In, in Loftus, sadly, only 20% win rate. So don't let, hopefully that doesn't... Uh, factor into it. We must the guys must just go there and show, and the crowd must get behind them. So yeah, as good as your last game is, the, is is I think the South African uh, it has to be the South African talking point. They need to keep and prove that it wasn't a fluke. The Wellington win, they uh, that was just that was the way the box play, and I feel last week's performance against Australia proved that they can keep a little bit of consistency. I feel they weren't as good as they were against All Blacks, but the Springboks do have a, a, a sad tendency to play as good as the team they meet. They they don't outclass like the All Blacks. They, they try to pretty much, whatever that is required to win, they do. They don't do much more than that. They're not there to, to flash, whereas the All Blacks are there to destroy quality rugby no matter who they face. So that is a flaw in Australia, South Africa's strategy, but hopefully the quality of the All Blacks brings out the quality in the Springboks. So let's talk about some of the interesting cho uh, choices of the game. Uh, Francois Lowe at 8th man. That was quite an interesting choice, and I think probably the main reason for it is definitely that uh, Rassi Erasmus felt our ability to get the ball from the breakdown in the previous New Zealand game was poor. We had long spells of the game where we just could not get the ball unless New Zealand knocked it on. We cannot count on them making mistakes, especially considering that's probably the first thing they're going to be focusing on is reducing the mistakes in their game. They had a couple and we were lucky that there was a, a definitely not their top performance against us. So I think Rassi Erasmus is trying to counteract that by bringing Francois Lowe in to get a little bit more ball. I don't think he's the best at it, but he hasn't had a poor season this year on that area, so hopefully he can bring that in. Him with Etzebeth, with uh, Kitsov, I think there's some power power options there. Even Peter Steff has got some uh, ball skilling skills that are really good. Although I have to admit, Peter Steff at the moment is a demon in tackling, so he deserves every accolade coming to him. Yeah, I think he currently, he, in the All Blacks game, he had 28 tackles, which is ridiculous, and 19 tackles in the Oz game. So I mean, so other players in the team should start also tackling probably. No, he's had a stunning season. 
And I think South Africa needs to prove it's not luck. But yeah, so Francois Lowe is interesting choice at number eight. I, I do think that it's it's mainly due to that factor. Uh, Pollard playing at home uh, technically for the Blue Bulls is great. I think it's going to be good to have the crowd behind him and showcase. And he really has stepped up his kicking throughout the throughout the uh, rugby championship. Everybody was questioning it in the first two weeks, but in the All Blacks game and in the last Australia game, beautiful 100% records, and he's just got to keep it going that way going towards the World Cup. He did, I did there's some articles where he did say that he, I think it was a, his major flaw was that he, he didn't actually practice it a lot in the, uh, between Super Rugby and uh, the Rugby Championship. That's probably where he, he felt it got a little shaky in that field, but he needs to keep up the kicking as it is going to be essential for this game. Again, from my previous my video reviewing the All Blacks game, one of the biggest things that African needs to focus on is the kicking. And it was interesting to see, I don't love the strategy, but it does work, especially in tight moments, to just kick, your, kick yourself into a lead like we did against Australia. I think it was practice to try and do that, although I think you need to first dominate the game and make sure that you can score the tries. Don't resert, revert immediately to kicking. I think that is a massive flaw. As you often, the major problem with kicking for poles is that you, if you get a three-point sweep, but you're now back in your half, and you don't want to be back in your half against the All Blacks because most likely they'll score a try. So I don't know if that's going to be the perfect strategy, but a long range one here and there for the for closing out the game, it's good to see Pollard on song again. Good to see. Kitsov starts on, on uh, scrums. I'm a major fan of the guy. He knows how to steal a ball. He knows how to scrum. Every time he's on the scrum, every other team shakes in their boots. So it's good to see him, and I'm glad Rossi is again giving him a start against the All Blacks. He didn't start last week, but he still made an impact when he did come on. So he can continue that, and I think he is, in my opinion, should be the starting. Um, it should be starting over Beast, but Beast has also got a good, a pretty good season. I just don't think he has enough to take a World Cup on still again. Um, it's good to see that. No, okay, on 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 the other side of it. Well, oh yeah, actually, hold on. So with, with one thing, the Islanders at least back. I think that's good. It's a little bit shaky on the center pairing for South Africa. I feel we haven't been able to really grow a pairing there due to many injuries, especially in the All Blacks game. But I I think with the Islander back, I think we can definitely do something there. We do have two. Our backline substitutes is a little worrying with two debutants there. We've got Papir and. Um, Damien Willemser, I think Willemser is more than strong enough to start to actually play when needed, so I'm not worried too much about him. Papir, have, we haven't seen much of him. He actually hasn't even played much Super Rugby. He played a little bit of Curry Cup, but overall, that does worry me, I feel. It's interesting that Rossi has put a lot of faith in the player, and I hope he can get some chance to deliver, although he hasn't played a Bok game yet, and I don't know if this is the one to, to blood a player on, the poor guy. So yeah, um, on the New Zealand side, I think you can see this is probably the strongest team New Zealand can field. Uh, they've really, oh, you can see that they, they, they're not backing down on this one. They want to prove a point with Noholo on, uh, on, on wing again. On wing instead of Ben Smith. Ben Smith moving to fullback. I think that's all got to do with the fact that they're looking for a stronger back runner. Over, I think Jordy Barrett isn't as strong a runner as Ben Smith. Ben Smith uh, is a beast of a runner, especially if you're going to give pace ball from players like Sonny Bill Williams or Bowden Barrett to him. Uh, it's going to be a tough one to stop. I think South Africa really need to to counteract that and make sure that they can keep those lines closed because that is the, the classic all-black try, just those cut-in passes from that. And now you've got two options. with a, uh, And even Goodhue can also place the ball in, into space like a magician. So that is probably going to be the, the major point where New Zealand is going to go back to what they, what they do best. They're not going to change it up just like they did in Argentina. They're probably going to come out firing just like they did in the previous game instead of what they've been doing most of the rest of the Super Rugby, which is a slow burn start to finish the game off. I think they're going to try and prove a point and hit hard from the beginning and then let the, the chips fall where they may. So it's going to be very interesting to see. I like the back line of New Zealand. They really, this is probably their best back line they can field. Their forwards pack is also probably one of the best they can field. They really have put everything into this game and that's what we're going to see from international tests. So I think New Zealand really are going to come out guns blazing. Uh, I'd like to also give congratulations to Evan Etzebeth. I think it's his 38th game in a row that he's now playing for rugby championship. If I'm not mistaken, that's the longest of any South African player consecutively playing in every rugby cha in, in cha championship game. So well done to him. So yeah, I think that's my, my, my little bit of review on the New Zealand, uh, New Zealand South Africa game. It's interesting. Let's move on to Argentina, Australia. So these two teams have a point to prove. They both feel that they are better than what they're currently doing. Argentina, in my opinion, are were a bit much better than they played last week, so that I think that they're going to have a strong run there. Australia on the other side, I think they have probably one of the best teams 
in the world individuals. They've got some of the best individuals. You've got Foley, you've got Pocock, you've got Hooper, you've got Israel Flau. Some of, I probably, if any coach had that team, they would just, <laughs> there's, that's like Christmas presents. So I, I do think that Australia are playing way under what they could be, and that's something they need to prove. They need to show what they can do and the quality of game that they can bring forward. So it's going to be definitely both sides just trying to prove that they're not lost. They are just, it's just the level of competition and also have some answers to give, bring back home. So let's begin with, um, we've got Foley coming back to number 10. It was an experiment, obviously, the uh, coach... Uh, felt that he needed to try with the last two games with uh, Beal actually playing in in Flyhoff and it worked well, South Africa took the first game but since then has not gone so well so I think it makes sense to bring Foley back, I think he is in my opinion slightly better Beal moving to inside centre is actually, I think is actually a better position for him and it's going to make for I think, I think a slightly different Australian attack I don't think it's fair to judge Foley on the first two games where he lost to All Blacks you're losing to the All Blacks, it's, there's no crime in that so I think it's good to see him there. I think he's a great player. They've got most of their firepower back. What is interesting is Tamua, the highest point scorer for Australia this season, is not playing. Is now on the bench. I mean, I don't know what the the, the thought pattern there is. Of course, I understand the major focus being you bring, keeping Beal on the side, but you've got to you've got to question your when you when you take some of the guys who are really being able to cross the whitewash off the field just to keep certain other players in the field who haven't really, in my opinion, shown the X factor that they normally do. So I think that's a mistake, but we'll see how it plays out on the day, I guess. On the other side, Argentina, I've got Moano back. Great, great, great news. I think the guy has got feet, like, I don't know, he moves his feet like a whisper. I mean, he's got a string like a butterfly, a float like a butterfly, string like a bee is written in his feet. I think he's got an amazing step and really is, I think, in Austria, Argentina have probably got the most electric back three in the tournament. I know that's some people will argue, to argue that, but they do, in my opinion. Um, what is sad, though, Batista Dalki is out. He, unfortunately, I think, got a shoulder injury and that, that is very sad. I think he, he uh, they're going to miss him there. Moroni is in swap, effectively swaps with more, uh, Moana to bring, so the, uh, to actually uh, swaps wings there. So it's going to be interesting to see that personnel change and how the, the back three can handle those maneuvers. But it is part of the game to be able to swap and understand and uh, develop your game. But yeah, Argentina definitely, I feel, um, with Moana back, they should have a stronger opportunity and I think they need to make sure that they control the game in the beginning. I feel like they, they came into the game thinking they were going to run it and they didn't give the patience to actually first control the game, first understand the opponent and then move forward in the previous games and they've actually done that very well throughout the rugby championship so it was sad to see that they couldn't uh, affect that again uh, but I, so on to that I think that's probably my major covers on those on that game so, yeah, so ne uh, next I'd like to just get my predictions so the New Zealand uh, South Africa game I'm going to go South Africa South Africa's got a pretty decent record at home not loft this but they do so I'm going to go South Africa by about five uh, it's going to be a tough one but it's going to, I think that's going to be a great game. And then the Argentina-Australia game, I'm going to give it to Argentina. They took the last game in, in Australia, and they're going to take this one. They've got a point to prove that they are not what they, they are not like they played last. They are actually a much stronger team. So I think Austra Argentina are going to take it by about, I'd say, about 11, 12 points. That's my prediction. I think Australia, unless Australia pulls a cat out of the bag, that's probably what's going to happen. But yeah, thanks, guys, for joining me for my video. Please share, please subscribe, please like. And yeah, add your comments down below, your predictions. Let's see how the games go. Thank you guys for the last round of Rugby, rugby Championship. Enjoy.